Marcus coming on at 15, yeah. which again, I had question marks over. You've played in the back three, you've played a little bit of 15 as well. We've always been talking about Freddie Stewart since he's burst on the scene. And he's played all the games under Steve Borthwick. Yeah. And there's been whispers that Marcus Smith was potentially going to start at 15. I can't remember if it was this game or the game against Argentina. Argentina was, yeah. But he looked very good. Is there an argument for that? It that he could start at 15? If we don't have a second ball carrying centre like an Owen, like a, like a Slade, obviously not in the squad. But when we don't have that option, having Marcus to come on and do that, which he did brilliantly tonight, he made... As soon as he came on, he touched the ball five, six times. We just didn't see in the first half. And I was watching him from up at the top, and he was just moving forwards around, putting them where he wanted to, to be able to get the ball himself. That's something that we are lacking. And Freddie is a one, probably one of the best defensive fullbacks in the in the world. So it's just which way you want to play the game. And it was just played out perfectly for Marcus to come on at the right stage of the game and just use a very tired... Japan defence against themselves. When you say defensive, and I can see him, I can see his family here, so hopefully they're not lip reading because I can know nothing about 15s. Aerily, <laughs> he'd probably be one of the best in the yeah. business, if not the best in the business. But and when you say. Backfield. Okay, so yeah. just go a little bit more on defensive because people will be looking at it being like, what do you mean defensively, like as in tackling, which it's obviously not. Yeah, so the work that he does, he will cover so much ground running just because he's fit and he just sees other things that, that, that plays in the front line won't see. He'll go and cover it and do a job on it and cover it up and you think, oh, Freddie's there. But really what he's, he's seen and done is not many players can do and cover that amount of pitch on themselves. He's Mr. Reliable, always catches high balls. As soon as it goes up, you know he's going to catch it. But it, we lose because we haven't got this playmaking centre and Freddie is not his natural game is to come and ask for the ball and want to go and attack. That's just not his natural style of play. So you've got to try and find it elsewhere. He's a superstar, though, isn't he? We're getting shots of him. That's his family. That's Oli Chesham. Oli Chesham's family as well. as well. Yeah, they, they follow me on social media. They follow him everywhere. They follow me they? on social media. Yeah, Someone that likes you. talks him up. He's a good player as well. Oli Chesham had his injury problems before, doesn't he? It feels like he's cemented his position in the yeah, second he row just with Marrow. It doesn't stop, mate. It doesn't stop. You were normally gone at like. If you started, which wasn't very often, about 50 uh, minutes, you were 50 out. 50 or 15. <laughs> I was out on my feet after 20 minutes. Well, Ches Ch Ch will just keep going and going and going. He's just done another 18. He's only been back a few weeks. Like He is fit and efficient. He's just in the engine room. Not yeah, You know more about that than me, mate. Yeah, but he's a good player. Modern-day athlete, for sure. Modern-day second row, whatever the athlete means. But you know what I mean. He's very athletic and powerful. Yeah. But the interaction with the fans as well, and that's what I mean. Maybe the expectation of England, the travelling support that they have, because they have been so poor. Actually, what was the final score? I was on the way down. It was thirty something. Yeah, they've 12. got thirty odd points. They got the bonus point. Yeah, we right, got so it. That's, we got that's, 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 nine, that's nine points out of a possible ten. You think about the uh, games exactly. that are coming up. Yeah. You've got yeah. Samoa as well, which is probably Chile and the Samoa next biggest, yeah. biggest game. You, no disrespect to Chile, albeit played very well against Japan. But the Samoa game is going to be massive. Samoa looked much improved, as we've seen. Let's just skip forward and say that England come through that with flying colours. Yeah. And there's a quarter final. Yeah. A Wales, an Australia, or a Fiji as that unfolds. Will England be ready? For any of them, I know you mentioned Wales before. Have you seen enough today? And if so, it's a kind of three, oh, four-fold question. It's what a, changes? It's a hard question because we're on. A, they're all going to be good teams, and the way that we've come into this, we had low expectations of where England were at and where they might actually get to. So I think we're we're in a quarter-final more or less now. Who that's going to be, we don't know, but we've definitely got the players and the experience to be able to get through a game of Wales and a Fiji, and then you're in a semi and. Who knows what happens? Wales is going to be the most difficult out of the two, I say, just because they know us a lot better. More difficult than Fiji. And Fiji would struggle with a game plan like tonight, just constantly rolling it in behind, turning them, turning them, forcing them to be very tactically smart getting out, whereas Wales would be used to that, and with dang bigger controlling things, it would be a harder game. But we can build We build on this. Like It's so good to get the try at the end, just to build on the confidence for next week. and. It just adds a bit of spice to it, knowing that you got the four tries. And we'll feel like we've done a job. Look, everyone's happy seeing the crowd and stuff. I mean, we're not talking about an arrogance of it. We've just had a good win, and it's all right to be happy about that. And what changes do England need to make, both from a personnel point of view, to get to their very best, do you think? And if you're, like, a winger, OK, are you happy? Like, are you happy if you're Johnny May or Elliot Daly in that team kicking, or do you want to see more innovation? Yeah, I Part of the frustration in the first half was I, I thought there was opportunities for us to play and we didn't play, we kicked it. 
No, that must have been the game plan. So if you're a winger or back three, and you've seen those opportunities, they're not coming, then first halves can be frustrating. But once you get into the second half and you, you can see the gaps are opening up, it's about then going, finding the ball and getting it, getting your hands on it more than often and not just chasing kicks and trying to knock it back. England are going under the radar right now. They've got two games that are very winnable games coming up, so they can put things in place and you get more time when you're on the practice and during the week to maybe spend more time on areas that you think are a bit weaker. Whereas if you've got big game all the time, you don't have enough time as coaches to put things in place that you'd like to move the team on. So these next two weeks, next three weeks, we've got a week off too. We've just got to use it to the best we can.